taking a few minutes, seniors, to review some of the aspects of today's job environment. I'm going to give you about nine minutes worth of tips that hopefully will give you some encouragement. The first thing that you have to remember is that people are still looking for designers. And in a recession, what you're going to find to your benefit is that the senior people get laid off because they have the higher salaries. So be optimistic. The key to this presentation is on how to be different. If you have 20 people looking for a design job, you've got to be different than the other 19. On a lot of my PowerPoint slides, I'm going to let you read them, then I'm going to expound a little bit on some of the issues. Regarding a business card, very important even as a senior in college that you have a business card. It has to be the standard size. Don't make it smaller than normal. Don't try to be cute and make it bigger, but do get thick stock paper. Put on the business card where you can be reached and the type of design you would prefer. If you keep it a little more generalized, it will help you in terms of your job search. And keep in mind, rejection is going to happen. Personalized stationery, very good. You can go to a, a contemporary art store to get some. You can create your own. You can go to Hallmark. But you want to have some type of stationery to write your handwritten notes, which is probably the number one aspect of this video to remember. You're going to send a, a handwritten thank you note prior to the interview. I should get that handwritten note a week before our time. So let's say our interview is May 10th at 10 o'clock. On May 3rd, I should get a, a, a note from you saying, Dan, your firm has a great reputation. I look forward to meeting you May 10th at 10 o'clock. Sincerely, your name. That is what you call a soft touch. Then, of course, after the interview, you write a handwritten thank you note short, thanking me for my time. 99% of the people you're competing with on that job are going to send emails, and it's all about making you different. I'll let you read this slide. Pretty self-evident. When you meet somebody, hold eye contact. Eye contact is the number one credibility builder in an interview. Hold eye contact. Repeat the person's name back to them as much as you can. It will A, help you remember their name, and B, it'll make them feel special. It's especially important to mirror the voice inflection, the gestures, and the personalities of the person that you're dealing with. The best book ever written, in my opinion, was written probably, I think, in the 30s by Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. You can read the book or you can go to YouTube and type in How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Very important. It's important that you understand how the person interviewing you thinks about bringing on a new person. And it's not about the design skills as much as it is about will he or she fit in. Are you a hard worker? Or are you a drama queen? Are you a diva? Are you going to show up on time? Are you going to listen? They're going to teach you what they want. Portfolio is important, don't get me wrong. But in today's tough economy, it's going to be about who is going to be the best team player. Who's going to come in on Saturdays when I need you to work? So the key is not to focus on the content, in my opinion, of your portfolio, but trying to figure out a way that you can bond with potential employers. A lot of times, not a lot of times, but 99% of the time when you set up an interview with, say, Dan Benford, you're going to meet Kelly, Lee, and Belinda because we're all going to try to assess whether or not you're going to fit in. So it's important that you understand there are going to be multiple people. Try to remember people's names as they walk in. Not easy, especially when you're young. But you're going to have two or three people that come in to that interview, and you're going to forget their name 30 seconds after they tell you their name. So um, get ready for that. If you want to sell what John Brown buys, you must see through John Brown's eyes. You are trying to sell John Brown. John Brown is your potential employer. So you have to remember, they're going to be looking about, okay, is this person going to stay after I train her? Is he going to be around for a while after I spend six months to eight months doing nothing but training this person on certain skills? That is very important that you convey that. For example, if you say, well, I really want to learn how to be a designer because I want to be creative and I've got a design degree and as soon as my husband gets out of uh, medical school, we're moving to San Antonio. Eh, no chance on getting that job. 
People don't want to train you to leave. Keep that in mind. Again, it gets back to that Dale Carnegie book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. You see things, if you see things through an employer's eyes, you will have a major empathy toward what they're looking for and how they feel about the person they're going to invest their time and money. Practice these interview questions. All you have to do is go to Google and Google most commonly asked interview questions. Some of them are pretty silly, but it's important that you can answer them quickly, okay? The one tough one that I'll give you a tip on is, you know, what do you want to make? It's important, for example, in the Midwest, let's say the average graduate's making $37,000 out of college. Person says, well, how much do you want to make per year? My answer, if I were interviewing with the Dan Benford School of Tips, would be, well, the average person graduating from college in Columbus, Ohio, Indianapolis, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Louisville, is gonna make 37,000. I realize we're going through some trying times. I'm willing to start for $29,000. I'll be the first one here. I'll be the last one to leave. I'll work weekends. And if after four to six months, you feel like I'm adding value to your company, we'll reassess what a fair salary would be. That tells me that you have a lot of confidence and that you're flexible. You want to like all the design firms in your area. If you're moving to Los Angeles, then you type in firms in Los Angeles. You want to like and follow the firms. A lot of times you'll learn about their A, their personality, and B is whether or not they're hiring. The last touch wins. What does that mean? Okay, so all of a sudden I interview 19 people and I hire somebody, I hire Bob. Bob, you got the job with Dan Benford and Associates. Two days later, Bob says, well, Dan, thank you very much, but I took a job with somebody else. Now I'm in trouble because I counted on Bob coming to work. So now I've got to go back through all the correspondence that I had with the interviewees. And if you wrote that nice handwritten thank you note in that pre-interview uh, note that we talked about, my guess is your name's going to come up first. You need to meet reps, carpet reps, fabric reps, paint reps, cambria reps, stone reps, furniture reps, all reps. Reps typically know where the jobs are. More importantly, we can tell you the personality of the firm that you're going to be interviewing with and the person probably that you're going to be interviewing with. Conversely, we can also tell you maybe some firms probably have high turnover and it'd be better off to maybe find another opportunity. Reps know where the jobs are. So when you have your business card, be sure that you give the reps your business card. Just as important, get the business card from the rep. And on the back of that business card, write down who that person reminds you of. So in six months, if you're still looking for a job and you call that rep or email that rep, you kind of have a somewhat of a remembrance of who that person was. Goes without saying. We talked about this. In today's tough job market, employers are gonna be looking for someone who is a team player, works hard, hard to convey that you're a hard worker, hard to convey that you're not a drama queen. That's what people want. Don't, don't think they're looking at, at, the portfolio is important, don't get me wrong, but they're looking for somebody who can be a team player in a tough economy. Smile a lot, firm handshakes, all the things that you know. Social media, you better be careful because 50% of the firms are gonna to go to your Facebook page and look for stuff. So I'll let you read between the lines on that. On the resume, have a professional review your resume or have an English teacher review your resume. Spell check, easy, but it's the the phrases, the proper tense of consistent phrases, the little things that can be done on a resume. And I can tell you in talking to design directors that 75% of the resumes they get have not been reviewed by either A, a professional resume person, or B, an English teacher. All right, here's a tip. Try to find reps in different markets, okay? Go to IIDA.org. If you're not a member of IIDA as a student, it might be a good idea to be a member because you can find a lot of reps on the IIDA website. For example, here you type in a city. Let's say you type in Cincinnati, Ohio. You're gonna get a bunch of names that come up here and you can figure out really intuitively who the reps are, okay? For example, 
if you look down this list, you'll see uh, Janice at C. Okay, that's a rep. Uh, EF Contract Flooring, that's going to be a rep. Shaw Contract Group, that's going to be a rep. Uh, Belinda Benford with Dan Benford and Associates. And you just basically want to draft a short email that you can copy and paste. The nice thing about the IIDA website, you've got hot links to all of our emails. So you just say something short. I'll let you read this. You can snap it with your phone. You can review this, but the email should be short. The key is subject line. Keep it short and very accurate succinctly. So that way, if I don't know who you are and I see that you've got, uh, you're an interior designer looking for a job, you want to state that in the subject line so I read your email. This is a catchy one. If a student sends me an email saying, Dan, I'd like to meet you and I'd buy you lunch, I would chuckle. That's a good touch point, a good soft touch. I'm not going to make you buy lunch, but that's a good trick in the email. Nothing beats the handwritten thank you note. This is who we are, danbenford.com. My email is dan at danbenford.com. We'd ask that you email us on Facebook, or like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. Best wishes, we're here to help. Thank you for watching.